Welcome everybody to the newly opened Crow Lake at Rookery Waters Piddly. Today we're going to be looking at a beginner's guide to the method feeder. I'm going to take you through the gear that you will need, which is all accessible from the on-site tackle shop, Tackle and Baits. Make sure you watch to the end of the video because we're going to be giving away all the kit that I've used today as part of a competition. Let's not waste any more time with me blabbering on, let's get straight into the fishing. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is dip the nets. No keep nets allowed on a pleasure session, so it's landing net only. And also, I'm going to dip my unhooking mat, which I will show you later. Well, we're at the swim. We've had a few fish already. And it's one of those beautiful spring days that we get sometimes end of March, beginning of April. It's been really, really cold. Had an abortive tent last week filming down here. It was so windy. Still caught a few. Absolutely no good for the audio. But we're back today and uh, we're going to do a bit of method feeder fishing. So, first things first, when you get to your peg, it's really important that you are comfortable. So, I pick my peg here. What I've done, I've Got my hooking mat sorted. Rod refs are very important because obviously I am feeder fishing, so my rod needs to be still. And also I need to sit comfortably. So what I've done, I've sat my chair at a slight angle. So how I'm fishing. I'm gonna have my rod on my knee, but I also want to be able to turn so I can cast accurately at the same spot every time. So this is the way I do it. I'm having a pleasure fishing session, so I want to be comfortable, but also I want to be effective. So I've got my mark over there that I'm casting to, but I've got my gear set up nice and neatly around me, so I'm really, really efficient. And also, if I want to, I can just sit back and chill out. So, kit sorted first. The other things you need around you, you need your landing net, hook bait, disgorger, and also your little gizmo for putting your pellet back on your feeder. So first things first, let's just get organized. Chuck out to the same spot. Let's see if we can get a bite really quick. Had a line bite straight away. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait for that tip just to pull all the way around and hold, or trot back. There's a tip just to keep twanging forwards and backwards as the fish hitting the feeder or hitting the line, just leave it. So, first thing you need to do, get to your peg, get organised, get comfortable, and then we can start fishing. You may have heard in the background, a car then pulling past me. Here at Rookery, they do a brilliant service for anglers. That was one of the girls from the cafe. She'd been down earlier taking orders for the anglers who were fishing above and below me. So, um, yeah, she's just been dropping off the bacon butties for everybody. There we go. Oh, missed it. So, it is that quick on these commercials. So what I'm using is this little ingenious method of packing the pellet onto the feeder. You fill it with pellet, not too much, and then just push the feeder into it and it moulds around your feeder. It's an ingenious idea because you get the same amount of pellet on your feeder every time you fill it. So you literally cannot go wrong. So I filled my pellet. I've cast at a tree on the far bank. Not literally, but that's my marker. I've clipped up so I'm, the feeder's landing just shy of the shelf. I am letting the line hit the line clip, pulling the rod back up to about 12 o'clock, and then I'm sinking the line straight away without actually pulling the feeder back. As the feeder hits the bottom, I want it to stay still. That's really important with method feeder fishing. And all I've done is sunk the line while I've been talking to you. So the line has sunk, and I literally haven't got to tighten anything up. as. I've put my rod back on the rest. 
the tip's just taken on a small curve and I'm tight to the feeder, so I haven't moved it as it's hit the bottom. What people do when they're feeder fishing, the mistakes they make is they cast out and they, as they're tightening up, they're pulling the feeder back. We've also left a trail of pellet or bait or ground bait, whatever you're using, away from where the feeder's landed. So when the carp come in to investigate, or the F1s, they are obviously then spread all over the place because they're not knowing where the bait's going. If you keep it in little tiny piles and you're casting accurately, the fish are going to move in very, very quickly to that spot and you're going to be more efficient. And also, what you're going to do is you're going to get these fish competing. The secret on the commercials is to get the fish com competing with each other. As soon as they start competing, they become very easy to catch because they obviously are hungry, they want to feed, and they sort of lose some of their inhibitions. So that's another little tip of the feeder fishing, the method feeder in particular, very accurate casting. And when it, let it land, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. When it lands, leave it alone. Right, I'll pay attention this cast. So I've put a few pellets in the mould, just push the feeder into the mould, and out it comes. Perfect. So I'm going to line up to my tree. I'm casting. What at 12 o'clock, hit the clip, bad arm over, sink the line. You may notice I didn't hide my hook bait in the mould, which you can do. What I've been finding is it's not made any difference. So just for a bit of laziness and speed, I've just been making the moulds up. So I've sunk the line. I'm getting the rod on the rest without pulling the feeder out of position. So no editing this time of the video. And let's see how quickly we can get our wrap round. There we go, straight away. I've got fish on the feeder. Had a line bite. I've been counting in my head how long the feed has been out, and I think between the optimum time has been about two minutes. However, before I set the camera up, I really had a lot of fish very quickly and they were homing in on probably the sound of the feeder. And I was getting bites within 30 seconds. So, because um, I probably stopped for five minutes setting up all the camera and not fishing again, I think the fish should just stop feeding so confidently. Once I get the feed going again, they'll probably become more aggressive. But they're there, they just need, you just need to get the little fine tuning bits right. So if you're not getting bites, the worst thing to do with this method is sit still and not cast back in. What I find to be a really good idea is just count in your head until you start seeing some action on the tip. So it might be a minute you start getting line bites, get to two minutes and then you start getting bites. Obviously it's cold, it might even be as long as three minutes because we're still end of March. But it gives you some idea of, of there we go. <laughs> it gives you some idea of what's going on and you can then time, oh hello, you can, you can then time your casts so you're not leaving the feeder out for too long. Like I said, if you leave it out for too long, the fish will just lose interest and they'll move off your peg. So I'm not sure how long that was, that's probably about two and a half minutes, I wasn't, wasn't counting in my head and talking to you guys at the same time. Now this is a slightly bigger fish. The key here is just to keep pressure on. Don't pull its head off. Just keep bending the rod. Coax the fish into the side. They're going to come to the side quite easily and they're going to dart around a bit in the side, so don't panic. Just we'll tip up slightly. This is where they just dig around a little bit. Get your net. Again, don't panic. Don't lunge for the fish. Just let it tire itself out. I've been impressed with this rod. It's doing its, it's doing its stuff well. So 
Oh, yeah, I think it was a nice cute little carp, this one. Yep. Let it tire itself out. Don't panic, don't pull, just hold it. Let the rod do the work. There we go. They tell you when they're ready because they pop up. Still not quite there. There we go. There we go. And into the net. Now, don't panic at this stage. Put your rod back on the rod rest. Don't know how that got there. The fish is okay in the net. This is why I use a hooking mat. So I'm going to rest my landing net pole on my leg and I'm just going to unhook the fish over the mat. Now, this is a slightly bigger fish. I'm going to rest it on the mat. It's a barbless hook, obviously. Fishery rules, so it will pop out beautifully. Which was that simple. But you just released it. Now we've got a lovely carp about two pounds. It's safely on the mat but in the net so it's very very safe. I'm just going to show you very quickly. Don't want to lift it up too high. There we go. Lovely fish about two, two and a half pounds. Back in the net. It's nice and safe and then I'm just going to release it back into the water like so. And it is that simple. Just don't panic. Use a hooking mat. Keep the fish in the net at all times and over the net. And it really is that simple. So, no setup, I promise. I literally just had fish as I was talking to you, and everything is that straightforward. Right, let's catch some more. So, I lost the hook bait, which is no big deal. In these tubs, you get lots of different colours. I, I was uh, experimenting. Uh, I think, I think I was using the orange one, so we'll try that one again. So putting the hook bait on is really simple. Just use the pellet bander. Into the elastic. Don't drop the hook bait. That goes in to your pellet bander. Just slide it off. So with these baits, which are called bandom sinkers, they've got a little ridge, they're kind of little dumbbell shaped ones, so the pellet band just sits nicely in there. Oh, I've got a bit of wind, it's going to ruin the audio, but hey ho, right, let's get back out there. So that was that simple, making my little pellet mould. Another little tip, before we cast, just check, pull your line, just check you've not got a tangle between your your main line and your, your tip. Otherwise it'll be a disaster. Okay, I'm lining myself up with the tree, out it goes, rod back up to 12 o'clock, hit the clip, sink the line. Haven't done anything with the reel, apart from put the bail arm over. Losing my mic. Okay, line sunk. Carefully rod back on the rest. Remember, I don't want to move the feeder out of position. Got a bit of a crazy bend in the tip at the minute, but that's fine. If I was uh, fishing on a drain for silvers, there's no way I'd have it bent down there, but I don't want to move the feeder and I'm tight to the clip still. So it proves that feeder is exactly where it landed I haven't moved it which is really really important I can't stress that enough well I reckon about 30 seconds so far line bite
we're gonna have a ooh, we're a minute in on counting getting crazy taps on the tip the line bites don't touch them leave it better drop back but it's not a fish that is so there's a lot going on there in a short space of time I probably got to about one minute 15 I had lots of line bites just ignored them what's going on had a drop back which still wasn't a bite but I tightened up tip stabilised again left it round it went If I struck or messed about or picked the rod up, I wouldn't have hooked this fish. And that's the next thing, don't strike. See people thinking they're Zorro or something. No need to. The, the fish hooks themselves, pick the rod up. That's all you have to do. Same process, get the net ready. Another nice little cup. This one's behaving itself, straight in. Spoke too soon. It's having its last go. Right in the side, always, every time, they're like, um, so predictable. As you can see, I'm not panicking, I'm not lunging for the fish. Just wait till it's ready. <laughs> Just wait till it's ready. And there we go, straight over the net. Perfect, same process. <clears throat> Get my rod out of the way. This is why the hooking mat's vital. Nice fish. Just gonna pop the hook out very quickly. If I had a, a cameraman, I could show you better, but I don't. Get rid of the terminal tackle. See, the fish is just absolutely perfect down here. It's a beautiful little mirror. There we go. I'm not gonna hold it any higher, just in case it flips. Back in the net. And back in the water. Didn't want to leave me, bless it. We're going to use the Daiwa 11 foot feeder rod, that's a rod and reel combo, and it comes with 8 pound mono already loaded onto the reel, which is a real bonus. The key with method feeder is to keep the bait going in on the feeder. So you need to prepare your pellets beforehand, which can be quite tricky. But we're gonna use this, ready prepared pellets. This is a brilliant idea. They come already pre-soaked, so they're soft enough to mold around the method feeder. For hook baits, we're gonna use these Sono Baits Bandom Sinkers, which are an array of different colors. So you can experiment throughout the session on which color is working best. You need to double check with the fishery rules of which feeders are allowed and which ones are not. Basically, all the carp safe feeders are allowed, the inline ones where if you snap off, the fish can pull the line through the feeder. These Drennan method feeders are superb and used a lot by anglers on the complex. I'm gonna make life even easier for myself. I'm gonna use ready-made hook links. These already have the pellet band on as well. These are size 14 barbless. So these will just connect straight to the bottom of the method feeder, which I will show you shortly. This is a really handy tool. This will help me get the, the pellet bander around the pellet. So that's commonly known as a pellet bander. So one of these is really useful. And finally, what every angler should carry with them is a disgorger. So we must make sure we have that with us as well. Okay, so we've got all the gear. It's time to rig up and then get out on the bank. Rigging up is simplicity itself. All you do is also put your line through your rod rings. Then you put your main line through the feeder, like so. It just runs freely. Tie an overhand knot on the end of your line. So I like to tie a figure of eight. Then 
hand with it. Keep it small but not micro small. And with all knots, just moisten it. Pull that tight. And if you can see that there, just tidy up the tag end. This is the simplicity itself now. There's a connector, a little plastic connector, and as you put the loop over the connector, pull the plastic sleeve over the end of the connector, you just put your loop down, expose the other end, and again you have another little plastic loop. Get your hook link which has got a loop on the end. You do the same this end, put the loop over the plastic hook, slide the sleeve down in the middle so the sleeve, both, the sleeve for both is in the middle. And then all you need to do is get your feeder pull to connect it into the base. So you end up with a very short hook link, feeder and your main line. The reason why this style of feeder is so good is if you should snap your main line on a fish, the carp will pull the hook link through the feeder so it's not dragging the feeder around with it, it attaches itself from the feeder. So it's just pulling a short piece of line and with barbless hooks it will throw the hook fairly quickly. So these types of feeders and this designer feeder is superb because it is very fish friendly. Attaching the hook bait onto the pellet band is simplicity itself. Just push the pellet band through the band of your hook bait. Get your pellet, place it into the band that you've opened up, close it and gently seize it off and there you have it. Perfect pellet the band. Really, really simple. See how quick that is to put new bait on that feeder? Same process, check the line, spot the tree, hit the clip at 12 o'clock, bow alarm over, sink the line. Sometimes you get a whack on the drop, or just as it landed. Carefully back on the rest. nice it's tight to the clip tips bent I'm tight to my feeder it hasn't moved it's perfect counting again I think about 40 seconds line bite on a minute. It's like I hit 60 and my tip goes whoop. But ignore it, it's just a fish either hitting the line or pushing the feeder about. It's probably a fish just hitting the line.
I've lost count. I think it's about a minute 40 ish. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Violent. Tip went round, rod started to move. That's why it's really important just to ignore all those line bites because they're nothing. This method it's a bit see your pants sometimes, just gotta trust it. Um they hook themselves. Pick the rod up, do not strike. You are not Zorro. Right. I'm gonna get the net ready a bit early, but it's okay. I find if I just keep the rod tip nice and low, it controls the fish. If you have it up in the air, they kind of shoot up and down the lake. If you have it shot, um, rod tip low to the water, they just seem to come off the bottom slightly and behave themselves a bit better. And then we get to the side, obviously you've got to lift the, top, uh, the tip up to use it as a shock absorber. If a fish lunges and you've got that rod tip low, you could uh, be in trouble. Well, this is a beautiful F1. Okay, straight into the side, same procedure. Leave the fish in the water in the net. Get rid of your rod. Do this matchman style. So the hook is just there, out of the way. Right, beautiful little left one. Look at that. Again, I'm not holding it right up in the air. In case it flips, back on the net, over the unhooking mat, fish back in the water. Beautiful. All three fish, absolutely immaculate. Mouths immaculate. The guys here at Rookery Water, the waters have really invested heavily in stocking some quality fish into these lakes. So. It's important that as anglers we look after them. So I do think the unhooking mat is absolutely vital. You can see its importance in what I'm doing here. Um, you get a slightly bigger fish, you're a bit nervous unhooking it, keep it in the net, have it over the unhooking mat, on top of the unhooking mat. Don't panic. Just do things at your own pace. All right, let's catch some more. That pristine, beautiful. Okay. Back. And it is that simple. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short video. It gives you an insight of what to do. Make sure you enter the competition so you can win the rod and reel. We're going to give away the rod, the reel that I've used today. Um, obviously, you're going to have a new, bat, new box of pellet, hook links, feeders, exactly the same kit that I have used, and that is what the winner will get out of the competition. So, get out there, get fishing, and good luck. <laughs> <laughs>